Now here we are, another day in this god-awful wilderness. Nothing like France. Just Native Americans, the snakes, the mosquitoes, the bugs, the sickness, no food, no house over my head. As a French soldier, you wake up, maybe eat some deer jerky. You certainly didn't have coffee, your stop and goes. Maybe there's some fruit, some apples, some berries, some corn that they had bartered for. But your contingent of troops here either to negotiate with the English or to find out what the English troop strength are. Don't really know. But it's another day. We'll do what we need to do. You get up, you walk down to the stream, you wash your face, you put your uniform on. And 7 o'clock in the morning, you're talking to your buddy, your commanding officer. All of a sudden, you hear a thunderous roar, explosions, 40 muskets going off at the same time. Although they didn't all go off at the same time, they would probably have been a quarter, half second, maybe one second delay. The noise at that point, time just stands still. The, the noise comes from up on the, the ridge line here of these rocks, just deafening and white smoke. And then you see faces, you see people start to poke their heads up and start yelling and screaming and, and coming down the trail you see Native Americans in the, 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 the scary intimidating dress with the paint and the tomahawks and you, the person you're standing next to just drops to the ground and five minutes two seconds go by and it seems like five minutes everything's in slow motion you look up and you're, you're you don't even have your musket you, you run for your musket and another man falls and you're wounded and people are crying and people are screaming and the men on top are yelling at you. Some of them not knowing how to speak French. You don't know how to speak English. After a few seconds or minutes of this, you figure this is hopeless. You're, you're hopelessly outnumbered and the men are just dropping so quickly that you don't even grab your rifle. You just, you just get up and you start running. You start running down this trail as fast as you can hoping that the British don't have enough time to reload. You start running through the trees. You still hear the musket fire. You run down these trails, and all of a sudden you come to a dead stop. There's half a dozen or dozen Iroquois Indians with paint, tomahawks, bows, and arrows, yelping, hooping, screaming at you, and shooting their muskets. You figure this, do I possibly, or do I die or possibly live here? very quickly. So it's early in the morning. The sun's not up yet. It's still pitch black out. You can start to hear some of the birds chirping as you can hear now. You're very quietly. A group of 40 men, probably 20, in this unit, slowly walking down this hill, not making a sound. You were grabbed late last night. By Lieutenant Colonel Washington, when the Native Americans, the Iroquois, came and said they found a camp of maybe 35 French soldiers been tracking them. You slowly make it into position. The Colonel tells you to, Lieutenant Colonel tells you, you know, to stay on this side. Of course, there's no, no instructions here. But up in the in the woods, the Colonel says, "I want you here, making sure no one retreats. We we'll have a, some men down here. Also have some men here, both British and maybe American um, frontiersmen and uh, Iroquois Indian. They're our allies. So you slowly make your way up. You're cold. You're hungry." Probably didn't get a chance to sleep. You probably had to march most of the evening to get here. You work your way down through these rocks. You look over the hill. You see the camp of French. You have no idea what they're doing here. But seven o'clock, you're going to find out. So this lieutenant colonel gives the order. You bring your musket up as the men are starting to you breakfast and get ready, and on his command, you fire. 
volley, a 20, 25, 54, 45 caliber ball being shot. Everyone with their target, just chaos. Hitting men, men dying, men screaming, men running, men crying. This is what it was like. This is what it must have been like back then. People hiding behind rocks, running, dropping your weapons, run down this trail. Only to be met by Iroquois Indians, Native Americans in their garb with tomahawks, knives, bows and arrows, ready and willing and able and wanting to scalp them. French troops drop their weapons, run back here and surrender themselves to the, to the, to the British and to George Washington.